What's up guys, this is Zach with Top Deck Nation, and today I thought I would change things up by making a list of my top 3 sleeper picks for the upcoming North American International Championships. These decks are somewhat under the radar compared to the rest of the metagame, and I think that's what makes them particularly intriguing as they could potentially make their way into the spotlight once again, especially at an event of this scale. The lists shown are ones that I have been personally testing and have had success with as internationals draws near. Feel free to modify them to your liking and I'll try my best to give some insight on each deck strategy. To start things off, I feel that one deck that can make a splash at internationals is Rainbow Road. Upon the release of Breakthrough, it was apparent that the Rainbow Force Xerneas had immediate potential as a main attacker. With the dual type mechanic in the format, it was often paired alongside Pokemon like Volcanion EX, Galvantula, and Bishop to maximize damage output. However, it seems that the format has shifted quite a bit since then. Perhaps it's the fact that Xerneas requires both a fairy energy and a double colorless energy in order to attack, meaning that a slow setup could result in a quick knockout. Max Elixir and Experience Share can help circumvent this weakness, but oftentimes it still takes a couple turns to get an attack off. That said, once set up, Xerneas is literally a rainbow force to be reckoned with. With just 5 different types on the bench and a choice band, Xerneas is hitting for 190 damage, enough to KO many popular attackers such as Tapabulu GX and Volcanion EX. In addition, the deck gains a consistency boost thanks to both Tapolele GX and Orangaroo, the latter of which now replacing Shaman EX and removing a liability from the bench as well. We'll have to see if it is time for Xerneas to shine in the days ahead, but the deck cannot be taken lightly given that its main attacker only gives a single prize and can take down most popular attackers in a single blow. Another deck that might make a splash at internationals is Greninja Break, pun intended. We previously made a deck profile video for this deck, so check it out on our channel if you would like a more detailed breakdown. I believe Greninja is severely underrated in the current format as it gained quite a bit of support with Guardians Rising. Tapalele GX is arguably the biggest addition as it effectively adds 6 more outs to supporter cards when paired with Ultra Ball to search it out. Also, Fill Blower and Choice Ban allow you to finally counter Garbotox and Garbodor, allowing you to continuously use the Giant Water Shuriken ability while also hitting magic numbers for quick knockouts. For example, previously the Volcanion matchup was even to unfavorable as Volcanion is naturally aggressive and could easily one-shot even the 100 70 HP break with a simple steam up and fighting fury belt. However, things are quite different now as you can win in a matter of a few turns once you have a couple Greninja breaks set up. You can put 60 on the active Volcanion EX and simply shadow stitching with a choice band for the knockout. Not only is it assuring you win the prize trade, you're also forcing your opponent to have a Pokemon Ranger to turn their abilities back on, which many players are not even currently playing. Greninja falls hard to grass types such as Tapabulu, Lurantis, and Decidueye variants, unfortunately. Despite the powerful giant water shuriken ability, it isn't quite enough when a break can be taken out in a single attack each turn. However, the popularity of these grass decks remains to be seen at internationals, as Volcanium will likely see a bit of play, and other big decks like Espeon Garbodor, Zoroark Break, Drampa, and Vespaquin are sure to be more prominent, all of which Greninja Break can easily hold its own or even have favorable matchups against. Finishing off this list is a deck that I have yet to see actually at an event, but can make an appearance nonetheless. As I searched for a way to counter Espeon Garbodor, which in my opinion is the most consistent deck of the format, I stumbled upon Lunala GX. Along with Sogaleo GX, Lunala was quickly dismissed when the Sun and Moon base set was released just a few months ago because it was a stage 2. Between a thick evolution line and cards like Rare Candy, it was evident that the deck was simply too slow and clunky to perform well in a format with aggressive decks containing big basics such as Darkrai EX and Volcanion EX. However, fast forward to now and things are much different. Items like Max Elixir are being played less and less in response to the game-changing Garbodor with Trash Alanche. For instance, Volcanion decks are now playing Turtonator and thicker counts of the non-EX Volcanion to accelerate energy instead of using Max Elixir. Lunala GX is designed to work in a format that is much slower and I think that time is now. Stage 2 decks have continued to perform well even at large events recently. Metagross GX and Vikavolt quickly come to mind. Lunala GX works because its ability allows it to quickly move around and heal off any damage taken as you set up. Its energy requirements are steep, but thankfully Sogaleo GX can get around this and get 5 energy on the board in one swoop, including rainbow energy to fuel its own attacks. 
Lunala's GX attack is vastly underrated, allowing to essentially take prizes instantly without even dealing damage. Finally, Wobbuffet is a means to get set up and serves as a secondary attacker, countering popular abilities like Volcanion EX's Steam Up, Greninja Break's Giant Water Shuriken, and even Decidueye GX's Feather Arrow quite effectively. I will admit that the list shown is a bit in the rough stages as I am playing around with the notion of including Choice Band to hit better numbers as well as a few other cards. That said, I think the strategy is definitely unique and could easily throw off opponents for surprise wins if they struggle to counter the 250 HP Pokemon GX and its ability to heal each turn while preserving energy cards and freely switching to whatever Pokemon fits the matchup thanks to Sigalio's Ultra Road ability. So what do you think about these decks? Will any of these make a splash at North American International Championships this weekend? Are there any other decks that you think could have potential in a format largely dominated by Garbodor and Zoroark? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to like our Facebook page at Topic Nation so you can stay up to date throughout internationals. We'll be covering the event all weekend long. And finally, consider giving this video a big like and subscribing to our channel for more competitive Pokemon TCG videos. Your support has been incredibly appreciated and my summer goal is to hit 2,500 subscribers so let's make it happen together. But in the meantime, this has been Zach with Topic Nation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one and see you guys at internationals.